What? Drizzt had been patrolling the slopes of Kelvin's Kern for three weeks. Alone, save Guenevar. Peace, my friend. This girl is no enemy. Are you, young one? No. And so, when he'd seen the human girl, Driss decided to introduce himself. He had learned from his mistakes in Maldabar and was determined to meet his new neighbors. Be ye a drow? I am. What does that mean to you? I've heard of drow to be evil, but you don't seem to me. I'm not evil, and I'll bring no harm to you. My name is Dristo Orden. My name's Caddy Bree. My daddy's Bruner. Kenya clan Battlehammer, the dwarves. Well met, Caddy Bree, daughter of Bruner. Your Caddy is beautiful. Guinevar is her name. You can pet her if you'd like. You should not be out here alone. There are monsters in these hills. Great shaggy white beasts. Tundra Yeti. I'm not fearing them. Night's coming. I'd best be getting home or Daddy'll worry. Do you need help? Huh. I know these trails better than you. Of that, I have no doubt. Goodbye, Drizzt. Goodbye, Guinevar. I'll come back, I promise. Farewell, Farewell Caddy, Caddy, Caddy. The meeting had gone better than Drizzt ever dared to imagine. Caddy Bree's innocence had allowed her to look past his dark skin, and Drizzt knew he'd made a friend that day. Perhaps in time she would even introduce him to her father. After all, to have taken in a human child, this Bruner must be unusually kind and understanding for a dwarf. Keep yourself away from the mountain. I go to Brinchander for business and what does Cassius tell me? That there's a cursed dark elf running around me hills. But daddy... On your word, girl. You'll not set foot on the Kern without me permission. Promise me. I promise. The next few weeks were torture for Cadbury. Her mind raced with questions for Drizzt, and she desperately wanted to talk with him again. At the same time, Cadbury didn't dare go against her promise, even if she knew Drizzt wasn't the horrible creature Bruner thought him to be. There had to be another way. The answer came to her during a rare midwinter thaw. The bats around Kelvin's cairn were technically part of the mountain, so she could walk them freely. And if she called out for Drizzt, the dark elf's keen ears would hear her, and he would come down from his small cave high in the rocks. Every few weeks, Caddy Bree would escape the dwarven caves and meet Drizzt on the trails. The two of them would share a picnic lunch and exchange stories, Drizzt telling of his time in Menzo Baranzen and Caddy Bree of her life with the dwarves. And thus did the winter pass as the two friends grew closer each greatly enjoying the other's company. Spring came late that year, even by the standards of Icewind Dale, but for Brunner it seemed far too soon. He vowed to confront Cassius's drow as soon as the snows receded, and while the sturdy dwarf wasn't afraid, he'd heard enough stories of evil dark elves to be wary. A cursed drow. I ought to drive him from a mountain. Huh? <laughs> K 
Come on then, you stupid worm. Enjoy the show, Alf. Yourself and me, then, Drow. Vile creature. You got the belly to come and play with Brunar Battlehammer. Driz flinched at the dwarf's words. After spending so much time with the accepting Caddy Bree to learn her father saw him as nothing more than a monster, enraged Drizzt. The dark part of him, the hunter, longed to leap down and punish Brunner for his ignorance, for the ignorance of all those who had rejected Drizzt based solely on his race. But he fought the urge. Drizzt knew what was in his heart. Mieliki knew, Cadibri knew, and Montolio had known. He would not betray them with violence. Drizzt's sudden departure left Brunner confused and annoyed. From what he knew of Drow, this one should have seen he was wounded and attacked. Why did the Dark Elf leave? Brunner was never much for puzzles, and so his mind quickly seized on the simplest solution, even if it was one he didn't quite believe. Nah, not a Drow. Can't be. Roddy McGissel came to Icewind Dale a few weeks later. His long hunt had taken him halfway across the world from Lurkwood to Mirabar, where he found the Weeping Friars and gave them more suffering that they ever imagined. Then along the northern caravan routes to Bryn Shander. And from there to the home of Clan Battlehammer. Cassius says you must have seen the drow, him being so close. If any of my people have, they've not spoken of it. If your drow's about, he's been no bother. Drow gave you that fancy scar, did he? And killed me talk. Don't look dead to me. Me other talk. He cared not a thing for me, and well you shouldn't. But it's not for myself I'm hunting this one. It's for them whom he killed. Years ago, in the southern town of Maltabar, there lived a simple farming family, the Whistledowns. Good people with hearts of spirits and a love of the world. And then he came. The drow cut them down, hacked them to pieces, and his devil cat ate what was left. Liar. You've come to us with a dark tale, McGissel. He shook me, daughter, and I'm not for liking me, daughter, shook. You must know of the danger on your door. Draws a bad one, mark my words. That's why I need your help. Brunner could sense the unpleasant man wasn't telling him the whole truth, but he didn't much care. The draw was no enemy of his, at least not yet. Still, he might have helped Roddy, if only to be rid of him. But Caddy Bree's cry set Brunner's mind to working, and he couldn't ignore his daughter's distress. No. We're finished. Show him that door. You're making a mistake, dwarf. A horrible mistake. Me daddy, hi. Enough. You've been to the mountain, you've seen the drow, haven't you? And you disobeyed me. And now we learn the dark elves are killer. He's not. He is if I say he is. And you're not to see him again.
Tris. Why are you here, Cadbury? What's wrong? The thistle down to Maldabar. That's what's wrong. Oh, that story has followed me even to the end of the world. I killed no one except the monsters who slew the thistle down on my word. You weave two tales apart, yourself and McGrissel. McGrissel. Came in today, big man with a big dog. He said you killed them farmers. Then you have our words alone, and there is no evidence to prove either tale. Never did like that ugly brute. But he's hunting you. What'll you do? Do not fear for me. With Guinevar by my side, we will keep Roddy McGrissel away. Until I can figure out my best course. I'll be off. I don't believe your father would appreciate you coming here. Good night. Drizzt had thought McGrissel a long-distant problem, but the menace was here, now, and once again he'd have to stand alone, if he meant to stand at all. The thought of battling Roddy, win or lose, did not appeal to Drizzt, which left only one other choice. Come, Guinevar. Let us be away. This is no home. <sighs> I know you know. You came to the mountain for a reason. You came to see the drow. I know that you were friends, seeing it in your eyes. You know not a thing. You're talking lies. Let the girl go, McGussell. So you come to face your fate. Run off, Caddy Bree. This is not your affair. Enough of this. You have pursued me through years and leagues. I salute your resilience, but your anger is misplaced. I did not kill the Thistle Downs. To the Nine Hells with the Thistle Downs? You think that's what this is about? You took me dog and half of me face. Driss wanted to argue, wanted to remind Roddy that it was he who had initiated their long-ago fight, and that his axe swing had felled the tree that tore his flesh. But he knew it would do no good. Roddy's pride had been wounded, and it could not be healed with words. Take your dog and be gone from here. I want no fight. Well, you've got one! Hold still. I told you to go. Kill me. Kill me or I'll hunt you to the corners of the world, and under if need. Kill me as you killed me, dog, or you don't have the belly for it. Waves of jumbled emotions assaulted Drizzt. He wanted to kill McGrissel, more out of frustration than vengeance, but he couldn't. For all that he held dear, Drizzt had to respect a human life, even one as wretched as Roddy McGrissel. No. Uh. 
hours later. Morning. You shouldn't have touched me, girl, my crystal. She's in league with a drow. I went to him, I did. I've seen Trist, seen him true, and he's no murderer. He saved me from this one. Dark elves got her mixed, flooded her mind with his stories. He don't know me, girl, but you'd be thinking the better than to call her a liar, my crystal. And I told you before, I don't like me daughter shook. Roddy McGrissel and his now three-legged dog left Icewind Dale a short while later, never to return. Bruner climbs this place is called, me being Bruner. I saw no ownership. If you claim it, I shall leave. Hmm, just a damn pile of rocks. Cause I named it, don't make it mine. Nothing's what it seems, Drow. You drove McGristle off, didn't you? Bah, never trusted humans. Never know what they're about. But a dwarf's a dwarf, a gnome's a gnome, an elf's an elf, an orc's stupid and ugly, and a drow's a drow. Or, so I thought. All me life, I've been told drow are evil. But then one comes to my valley and worse me own daughter goes to him. She tells me he has a good heart, and I see in your eyes she's speaking true. What then? I thought I knew. I thought I had it all figured out. But I didn't know nothing. Bruner's climb. Ha! Ah, call it Driz climb. Call it what you will. It's yours now. But you be keeping your eyes on me, girl, if she's so orc headed as to keep visiting you. Be knowing that I hold yourself responsible for her safety. It would take Driz days to puzzle out that dwarf's rambling dialogue, but he surmised one phrase clearly. Bruner had accepted him, if grudgingly. Driz. Wouldn't have to leave Icewind Dale.